Hi guys, wanted to make, make a video about these Motorola walkie-talkie units. So, got two of these from Amazon. I think they were like 26 bucks. Now the thing with these is that um, if I open the back here, they take three AAAs. If you get the regular alkalines, I think these AAAs ought to be around like 800 milliamp hour. We're gonna try and hack these walkie talkies, but we're gonna see if we can power these with something rechargeable that we have laying around um, instead of having to buy AAAs, hoping if we can do like lithium ion, like one cell should do the trick. There's three of these cells that go in here. The alkaline ones are 1.5 volts a piece. These rechargeable ones I have in here are nickel cadmium, so they're at 1.2 volts. So, you know, it doesn't show a low battery voltage or anything like that. Um, so it's working fine with 1.2 volts times 3. That's 3.6 volts. I'm pretty sure that they're, they're wired in series over here, you know, from negative to positive. So we're going to check that out. And if we had the Duracells in there, it would be 1.5 times three so yeah 4.5 volts so we've got the range of 3.6 to 4.5 volts this guy this is like an LG cell it's an 18650 I think it's standard 4.2 volts on the full charge and then it goes down to 3.7 you're pretty safe so we're within that range but the good thing about these ones is that compared with three of these it's still gonna give you 800 milliamp hours worth of juice this guy by itself is going to give you the same voltage but almost 3000 milliamp hours so you're looking at about four times the battery lasting compared with these triple a's that you have to constantly pay for and lithium is going to be much better for recharging and stuff compared to nickel cadmium as well so although we will not be able to fit the cell in there of course we can probably you know like zip tie it or something out here and connect it in there and uh, see if we can get a solution that lasts four times as long on a single charge as long as you don't puncture the cylinder and get to the lithium i think i think this will be pretty good so we're gonna try that um First thing I think we're gonna do is we're gonna see how this stuff is connected. Usually we wire the cells up in series so you get like, you know, the addition of the voltages. So this is the negative end, it goes through here and then these two might be connected and then the negative end to the positive end here, these two might be connected and then it goes up and then it, you know, so the circuit is from um, the negative end here and the positive end here. Let's take a look. So we've got this multimeter over here. We're gonna turn this guy on and make sure we get the beep on the circuit here so we're good to go we're going to see where the connections are going so here negative to positive and positive to negative so these two should be connected technically so we're going to hold this up yeah so these two are connected you want to go from here to here then the electrons will flow here the negative end this is the positive end confirm that and then it'll go that way so positive end is right here negative end is right here um, what we want to do is we want to hook up a power supply from negative to positive over here and see if we can get this guy to turn on I don't think these guys take that much of a uh, current so this little soldering iron power supply right here should be good enough a little test power supply over here we'll set it to uh, three volts see if this guy turns on at three volts so uh, we're gonna power the power supply off and we're going to put the red wire, which I have for the positive guy. We're going to just kind of get it in here. And the negative end, we're going to put through. We turn this on. We got a good three volts going, and we see if we can power this guy on. And we're good. Oh, it turned off. Turned off right away. Yeah, it's saying it's blinking uh, low battery. So we'll turn this guy off for now. So three volts is very low. So if we go to 3.4 maybe, it's good for now. It's actually not showing the low battery. It's not blinking that. So even 3.4 volts is good, but um, what we're gonna be going for is this guy, the lithium, that's from 3.7 volts to 4.2. 
Uh, we're gonna shove this up to like, yeah, three, four, four point oh. Let's let's do four point two. That's where our. You don't want to go too high with this because you might fry some IC or something. But I think these have some tolerance. They can go from like three volts all the way up to. I think I think it'll tolerate to like six volts, but. I'm not gonna try it. I suggest you guys not try it either. Let's just go with 4.2 as our max because that's what we're gonna be, you know, trying to plug in. This is gonna work. So this is gonna give us, I believe, if I'm, I'm like calculating this in my head correctly, it's gonna give us about four times the juice of a standard AAA times three, which is 800 milliamps per cell. I think the triple A's that are the NICAD ones, the nickel cadmiums, they're at 1.2 volts and I, I don't know how much chemical they have. It depends on the manufacturer of the cells. So Duracell is like a good one, better than certain other brands. Um, but if you have really crappy batteries and you switch to a lithium ion, like a good one, like an LG or a Samsung um, 18650, you'll get a lot more walkie talkie usage. So in the, you know the next part of this video what we're gonna end up doing is we're basically gonna solder you know a negative terminal here and a positive terminal here and kind of like zip tie our 18650 on this guy so we'll we'll get to that in the next section of the video thanks guys so I wanted to spend some time um, talking about this cell over here um, we're gonna measure the voltage you do have to charge recharge these uh, after they have gone down below 3.7. In general, that's what you want to stay above. I think this is an LG cell, um, and it has like a white wire right here, you know, wired up to like some thermal sensor uh, that also detects if this cell is overheating because lithium batteries, they can be a bit volatile if you like puncture them or if they get like too high of a voltage while charging or too low. The two terminals, like the cathode and the anode, are on these ends. Um, this one has been packaged in like some shrink wrapping and it's got the wires coming out from the anode and the cathode and also the temperature sensor is there. This is also a good safety thing that they've got a connector up here. You know, you don't want to short out these wires. If you short out the lithium battery, you can also risk a fire. It's an oxidizing reaction, pretty difficult to put out. You kind of just have to let the chemical reaction take its course. We're going to measure the voltage on the terminals here and see if this is still good. The LG ones are, uh, are nice enough. I think they have like a little circuit board on top, you know, under voltage protection. If the voltage falls below a certain point, it will disconnect the circuits. This particular cell has been sitting in my shed for a long time. I was using it for a project when I used to work on drones several years ago. Because of the circuit, this cell should still be pretty good. 20 volt marker, because they do go up to like four point something. We've got about 3.6 volts coming out of this. So technically, if we connected this right now to our walkie-talkie, it would turn it on. Uh, but, you know, I would prefer to charge it as well. Uh, I've got a charger over here. Um, lithium batteries, you can't just uh, connect a voltage to them and expect them to charge. This is the um, IntelliCharger. I think it's called Nightcore. So it says that it, it does nickel metal hydride. Um, nickel cadmium as well and several of the lithium types it doesn't say alkaline but I had these these are alkaline uh, rechargeables I don't know much about alkaline rechargeables but I tried to plug them in here but none of them actually were charged by this charger but it does uh, we know that it supports lithium so we're gonna have to plug the negative terminal to one of these on the positive terminal and uh, charge this up. Please do get a lithium ion compatible charger for these because they do have a distinct charge uh, curve that uh, the current and the voltage have to follow. Otherwise uh, you might risk like the cell overheating. So just for safety it has to be a lithium uh, battery charger. But we want to be careful we don't want to you know short the battery by connecting the the black wire with the red wire. Um, so we're gonna have to be careful with that. So what I'm going to do is cut these wires one, one at a time and I'll cut you know them different sizes so they are less likely to collide with one another by accident. And we'll, we'll cut the red one like full length here. There, so we've cut the red one full length. Oh, oops. Ended up stripping the whole thing. Um, so the temperature sensor and the 
black wire the same length now, which is fine. So we just really need these two. Um, I will have to lengthen these, so I'll just solder some stuff to these guys. So I actually noticed that the night core, it's got a really large electrodes. So I'm just gonna solder on some stuff on here, a wire this way and a wire this way. We're just gonna, you know, get like different colors maybe just to show us that we're positive and negative. But this guy, we'll take some of the white one. We'll take some of the yellow one for positive. We have to strip them, so. Heat this thing up pretty good. I like setting it at 400 because I have really um, cheap solder. So another piece of advice guys, just just pay for the nice, you know, rosin core solder and, and you won't have to set your iron to 400 degrees. I'm gonna use white for negative and we're gonna solder it onto the negative part. are exposed they can touch each other let's be careful with this as well let's not short out the circuit I've kind of bent this black wire to, to keep it away from the red one two wires right here we're gonna try and keep them away from each other bend one of them down like that and then the negative one goes to the black twist this on with the red. And I to keep that in this position so that the, the red and the black wire are away from each other. And then we'll go ahead and plug this in and see if it charges it. It's noticed that it's got a, you know, pretty discharged lithium ion, lithium polymer, and it started charging and it knows that it's it's at a pretty low voltage because it is at 3.6 so we'll keep this plugged in you know we're gonna pay attention to it we don't want to leave this charging unattended so we can do some soldering on this while this battery charges so here we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna solder some terminals on to this guy right here what we'll do is we'll we'll tin this first and then we'll solder the wire on white one will go to the negative the red one will go over here to the positive <laughs> twisting it on. We're gonna see if we can close our clip over here. Maybe get them out on this side because there's no there's no button on this side so I want them out on this side. These wires are pretty thick. And I'm still at 3.6 or like 3.5 something earlier. But this should be good. So we're going to connect our you know yellow wire which is the positive terminal. That's one and number two right here. We'll just kind of, you know, get these pliers here. Really make sure they're good. Let's see if it turns on first of all. Yeah, we're in business. Let's see if we can find some zip ties. And I got them from the dollar store. You got like a, you got lucky you got a big pack from like a good dollar store or several, and then you can use them in all your DIY projects. We'll put the zip tie so it covers and holds the the wire in place so that it doesn't go flying around somewhere. There we go. Got it to click. So that's that's one zip tie. So we'll pull it down. Pull this guy down. So we'll move it up a little bit. Get it out of that button's way. 
uh, we are covering the screen a little bit, um, but the the negative terminal is down, the positive terminal is up, so no risk of these guys shorting out. Let's test it out. So we've got a full battery at 3.6 volts here, and we can charge it up to 4.2 to get the full 3,000 milliamp hours that this battery will provide. And we can test it out with the rechargeable nickel cadmiums. And we can test it out. Hello, hello, Roger, Roger that. Hello, I hear you loud and clear. I'm planning on hacking these further, so stay tuned. I'm, I'm thinking maybe something with like Arduino or Raspberry Pi or something. Well, we'll figure something out. So stay tuned for the next project. But yeah. Hi guys, just wanted to make an update video for these walkie talkies. This is the one with the NICAD triple A's that we recharged to full. It's been a few days and it's got the blinky logo for the low battery on now and it doesn't let us speak. So we're going to check um, what the state of the battery voltage is. The DIY LG cell hookup is still going. We've been keeping them on the entire time that we need to talk to each other. So most of the day they've been on and whenever we need to talk to each other, just press the button and say hello. This one's no longer receiving, so it's not doing anything. Um, yeah, so we're gonna measure the voltages on both of these and interpolate how much more life we're gonna get out of these. They've seen equal usage, by the way. So we're gonna turn this guy off. Remove the battery case. And We'll just do a quick measurement. And so we're at 3.37. So these are nickel metal hydride, 1.2 volts. So they were at 3.6 and now they're at 3.4. This cell's at 1.2, 1.2. Oh, this one's fallen down to 0.93. I wonder if this guy's the problem. This one failed first. If we turn it on, does it have a voltage drop just because it's got the power on? 3.35 now. Still at 1.2, still at 1.2, 0.9. So we're gonna put this guy away and see what we're at with this one. And we're getting 3.92. So this started out at 4.1. So we're at 3.92 now. So they're gonna go up till 3.7. When I started charging this cell, is at 3.3. It says voltage is 3.62 on the cell. So if we can go down to 3.6, Two, we've got a bit of ways. It's already, you know, outperformed the triple A's fully charged. This one, as expected, died first, but I still might get four times the amount of battery life that I did compared with the triple A's, but yeah, at least double, I'm, I'm assuming double or three times, and uh, that was the update. Hi guys. Hi guys, Ozzy here. Thanks for tuning in. I really hope you guys enjoyed the project. If you guys have any questions, or if you have any other DIY project ideas that I should try on my channel, hit me up in the comment section below. In the meantime, I hope you guys continue to tinker, make stuff, build stuff, all while staying safe out there. I'll see you guys next time.